Ladies and gents, uh, good evening. My name is Simon Brown from Just One Lap doing this evening's presentation. Videos from all the previous sessions and this video online at justonelap.com slash bootcamp. This is now number nine in the series, so the previous eight are up. Uh, those are the previous eight that we have run through. Key point this evening and why there was an email sent out suggesting to folks that you start to sign up with the demo and the like. And it depends. Some of you probably already got accounts. Some of you probably already traded. But this evening, things start to get real. FX and index trading. So this evening, we've been going through the processes. We've been looking at margin. We've been looking at, 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 at different philosophies and concepts and ideas and the like. And now this evening, things start to get very, very real. From here on out, <coughs> excuse me, we look at psychology. We look at risk. And I've left risk and psychology fairly late because they're things that if I talk about them, they don't make sense to you until you've really experienced them. I need you to have some fear and greed. I need you to, 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 to lose some vast amounts of virtual rands. And then when I talk about risk and psychology, you'll believe me. You'll understand what I'm talking about. It'll make more sense. The purpose with this evening is that you can leave here this evening at 7 o'clock and start trading in a demo account. And I'll touch why demo. The demo part is critically important. But we'll touch why demo uh, towards the end of the presentation. And of course, many of you, you know, if you're already trading live, then the demo might not be applicable. But certainly uh, to the newbies. And the point with the newbie, everybody started everything as a novice. You're sitting on a chair perfectly expertly. There was a time in your life when you couldn't even sit on a chair. Remember, you were a kid, or you don't remember. Trust me, you were a kid once, and uh, sitting up was now impossible to do. Everything we do, every single thing that we do, every skill we have, and sitting on a chair is a skill, every skill we have, we started as a novice. Doesn't matter how expert we are, doesn't matter how brilliant we are, how successful we are, we all started at that novice point. The point with this is the road is going to be long because we never stop learning. It's going to be completely intimidating at times. <clears throat> at times we're going to wish we'd never heard of this. Um, it, it, but persevere. Because the flip is, is that I mean, there are exceptions. I mean, could I be a world champion surfer? Well, sure, of course I could. Um, <laughs> you know, if I had just spent more time practicing as a kid and less time going to parties. You know, it, you know we, we, the aptitude more than anything is the perseverance. And we have spoken about it when we talked about a trading plan um, in, the, in the third session. When we talked about the New Year's trading resolutions. It's about repetition is how we get the skills. It's about doing things. The more we do something, the better we get at it. Trading is no different. That's how we learned to sit up. The first dozen times we fell down. It's how we learned to drive a car. It's how we learned to walk. Whatever your skill set is in your day job, um, how you learned that, not trial and error, but we make the mistakes and we persevere and we get slightly smarter. Trading is no different. With one, perhaps, health warning. And I allude to this, but this is very, very real. You can lose more money than you start with. Now, there are ways we can manage this. Absolutely. Guaranteed stop losses is one of them. But this is the real McCoy. We can, and, and the problem is it's a cognitive bias, and we'll talk about it when we talk more in psychology, but optimism bias, which is very important for us as human beings, as a species, to be optimistic. Otherwise, we would still be in the cave or the primordial pond or the tree, whatever it is. We need optimism. The problem is we go into a trade and we always assume that this is a winning trade. And it isn't. Some are, some aren't. We don't know which are. We've got to be, this is a stark reality with trading. And it's particular to trading derivatives. If you just buy a share, the worst thing that can happen is you buy African Bank and lose 100%. Nasty, but it's only 100%. Here, a lot needs to go wrong, but it can go wrong and you can have to put more money in. And that is the last thing you ever want to do. People will tell you it's school fees. No. It, it, I mean, it's not school fees. You, 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 what we're doing in these sessions, these boot camp sessions over the last eight months and the next couple to go, is to try and shorten the journey and to try and preempt some of what's going to happen. And that's the critical point. And I've got a quote which we end with this evening. Unfortunately, a lot of it we're going to have to do, which is, you know, you're going to have to go through the process. You're going to have to do a really, really stupid trade. That's just part of getting to become a successful trader. My advice, do it on a demo account. So it doesn't cost you any money. So trading, indices and FX. There's a 
two important points that are missing here. One is shares, one is commodities. We'll touch on why in a moment. Key point around indices and FX is we can make money long, we can make money short. In other words, we make money on the upside and we can make money on the downside as well. How do we make money on the upside? Well, how we always do. What? We buy something, price goes up, we sell it for more than we bought it, boom, we call that a profit. Simple as that. How do we make money on the downside? We sell something we don't own. So you log into the account and you have nothing there except some cash which is your trading money and you literally say, I want to sell African bank shares because I think the price is going to go down. So you sell those shares at 20 Rand and then the price falls to 10. When you sold them for 20 Rand, you received 20 Rand cash for it and you now have a negative position. You are short, in this case, the stock. Falls to 10 Rand, what do you do? Well, you go buy back the same quantity. That 20 Rand that you received when you sold them, you literally take 10 Rand of it and you go and buy back the African bank share. So you started flat, <coughs> negative, and you go flat again. If you're selling something you don't own. Let's take it to a local thing. We're coming into winter right now. So the, a, a tin of Coke costs 15 Rand. And I look at this and I think, yeah, a tin of Coke, 15 Rand, heat wave makes sense. But I know what's coming, right? I've lived in Joburg seven years now. I know that June is coming. And June means cold. There ain't no way on earth someone's going to pay 15 Rand for a tin of Coke in June in Johannesburg. So I notice the gentleman here has a tin of Coke. I say, sir, could I borrow your tin of Coke from you? I will give it back to you in July. You think I'm a little bit crazy, but I'm looking trusting. I'm in a suit and everything. So you lend me that tin of Coke. And I sell it to you for 15 bucks. Boom. I got the 15 Rand, put it in my pocket. Come June, when it's zero degrees outside, I find some poor sucker selling a tin of Coke for five Rand. I buy that tin of Coke from him for five Rand. I've made 10 bucks profit, and I give you your tin back. Thank you, sir. Here's your tin of Coke. Don't know what you're going to do with it. It's June, but anyway. That whole borrowing process, don't stress about it, happens in the background. But going short is selling what you don't own. It falls in price. You then buy it back. And you make the profit. That makes sense to everyone. Boom. Nodding heads galore. Another thing, another thing we are not doing. Oh, I can't move. That's my microphone. Another thing we are not doing. When we're trading shares, we're trading rands and cents, or dollars and cents, or, 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 or pounds and pence, or, or yens and yens and yens. What do the yens have? Um, what's the minor currency in Japan? Yen. Yen and yen. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> so we're trading rands and cents. Since we're trading FX, we're not. Since we're trading indices, we're not. We trade an index, we trade points. We trade uh, an FX, we trade pips. I'll, I'll delve into the details of it. But here, for example, the index is 46,000 points. That's not the price you pay. You don't pay 46,000. That's the price you would enter at. That is your reference point. You buy the right to that index at, 40, at, at what did I say, 46,000. If it goes up, you're making a profit. And if it goes down, you're losing money. So it's not as clear. If you make 100 points, well, you've made 100 times, depending what you traded. If you traded a micro contract, you've made 2 rand a point. If you traded a mini, you've made 5 rand. If you traded a, 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 a monster, you've made 50. Your profit is related to that move. Of course, it has to be. But you don't make 100 points because you can't spend points. You make 100 points multiplied by whatever the value. And ditto on, 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 on the FX, although they'll be trading pips. And I'll, I'll delve into both of that in a lot more detail. Because a lot of folks, we all get the shares. We get the, the rands and cents because we've been buying Cokes all our life. Um, we understand that part. Yeah, we're suddenly moving into, into indices as the process. So we talked about this in the, the second video that we did, which would have been August of last year when it was still cold. Uh, margin, leverage, and exposure. Conventional wisdom is shares are low risk and that FX is massively high risk and indices sit somewhere in the middle. And that's actually the wrong way around. Fundamentally the wrong way around. Look at Anglo-American in the last couple of weeks. Look at Kumba in the last couple of weeks. Um, so Kumba in December was 25 Rand. Then it went to 100. But when it hit 100 two weeks ago, it had been 250 a month a year ago. 
but let's take it a step. Like these are extreme moves. If you if you go and let's just look at the top 40, right, which is the 40 largest shares in the JSC. So no small caps, no second tiers and stuff like that. If you look at the list of movers on the top 40 on any one day, there are probably at least a half a dozen, if not more, that have moved 2% either up or down. And that is volatility. That's a news report that comes out on, on a fine out of MTN or a dividend being cut or a brilliant set of results or whatever the case may be. 2% a move day per day is, is common. And of course, what does our cognitive bias say? <clears throat> That's brilliant. Give me 2% move. Give me gearing. I'll get rich. Well, unless you're on the wrong side of the 2% move. And then you're not so rich. You're just getting poorer in, in, in the process. But let's look at our index. So looking at the top 40 index for 2015, in the entire year, it did 2% in a day, less than five times. In an entire 253 trading days, there were less than five days that were more than 2% in either direction. There are more than five stocks in the top 40 alone every single day doing that. If we look at 2016, we've had five days already in our market that's been 2% one way or the other, but we're having a fairly wild year so far. I know it's only, what are we, 10 weeks in, but it's been quite a 10 weeks. If we move to, to currencies, and when I'm talking FX, I'm not talking the miners, I'm not talking the RAND and the Aussie dollar, I'm talking majors. Majors is yen, dollar, euro, uh, sterling, uh, British pound, call it whichever you want. Those are your majors. When last did they move 2% in a day? They don't. The euro dollar had a massive move last Thursday when Draghi was speaking uh, and announced that he is going quantitative easing, kitchen, kitchen sink and infinity, blah, blah, blah. There was a massive move in, in, in the euro dollar that particular day. But in terms of percentages, it was about half a percent. And that, is in, I mean, that makes headlines for a measly half a percent move. The problem with FX, 200 times gearing. In other words, you take that half a percent move and you amplify it 200 times. So you're either doubling your money or losing everything, as the case may be. So when I say shares are high, indices are medium, and FX is low risk, I'm saying without the gearing that we add, which is a factor of our margin and our leverage and our overall portfolio exposure. So the point being is when, and I'm going to come back to it, but I'm going to touch it now. So when you go and do yourself a first trade, and in fact in the demo account, try it, what the heck. Take every cent that you have and just max, get the biggest position you possibly can. And see how long you stay alive. <laughs> I reckon you should be able to finish a cup of coffee if it was cold to start with. If you've got to wait for the coffee to cool and then drink it, you're going to bust out beforehand. It's about managing the risk. It's not about the FX or the index, or frankly, even the share, but certainly to a degree it is. It's about the risk we layer on top. Why do we push the risk? Because we expect to make money, optimism bias. And if we're expecting to be right, 100% is much better than 50 or 20 or 10. Of course, if we're wrong, 100% is game over. And this is game over, unless you're in the demo account. So we've got to manage that volatility. And I will touch on examples, but go check video number two, just one lap.com slash bootcamp. You'll find it there. Margin, leverage, exposure. I spend 35, 40 minutes delving deep into the understanding of this. It's critically important. So let's look at indices. What have we got? And this is using the, the, the IG platform, something called the SA40. Top 40, more colloquially known as. 40 largest companies on the JSC by market capitalization. Market capitalization is share price multiplied by number of shares. So we have got AB InBev at about 3 trillion, British American Tobacco at about 1.6 trillion, uh, SAB Miller at about 1.4 trillion, um, and then a bunch, uh, NASPAS almost a trillion. Um, and a whole bunch more. Number 40 on that list is probably uh, Anglo Gold Ashanti, who goes back in, and they're probably worth about 45 or 50 billion. The big guys carry more weight. So in that index, there is more uh, NASPAS than there is Anglo Gold Ashanti. 
there is more MTN than there is Woolies because MTN is big and Woolies is relatively small. So it's a market cap weighted index. But these are stocks we know. An index that typically trades from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday to Friday, public holidays excluded, updated uh, constantly. I, I forget the exact update. I think it is uh, three times a second. As the prices for the shares change, the index updates in real time if you're looking at a real, real time feed. And IG then enable you to track to trade on that. So what are you doing? You are trading, in essence, the top 40 index. So first thing, what, do you, what, do you, what is your reference? Well, you can go and reference, you could go and do a chart of the top 40, which is the underlying, or you can go and do the contract as offered by IG. A couple of important points, three contracts, a micro, which is two under point, minimum two contracts. So when I was giving you an example a moment ago, when you make 100 points, well, you've made at least 400 rand unless you were in the 50 point contract. That thing is dangerous. <laughs> so I have been trading index futures for 13 years. 13 years I've been trading index futures. I just recently pushed it to 180 rand a point, but I only do that if I'm on a winning streak par excellence. So if my previous six or seven trades have been winners, by then I'm trading 180 rand a point. I kick off at 90 rand a point. And that's with much, much experience. And it's still, when I have those losing trades, the hole is big. The hole is big. Trust me on that. So 2 rand a point, 10 rand a point, or 50 rand a point. Cash contract never expires. Uh, importantly, IG is offering 24-hour trading as well. So there is trading happening. So this market technically closes. 5 o'clock, uh, 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 top 40 shuts. 5.30, the futures market shuts. They'll give you continuous trading, but of course not on weekends. Shuts Friday evening, opens again Sunday morning. Somebody has to recharge the batteries at some point during the week. There is trading overnight. They use an algorithm based on international markets, what their expectation is. But you can enter or exit or be stopped out in overnight trading. That's an important point. You can get stopped out at 2 o'clock in the morning. And first thing you know about it is when you get that SMS that comes through. Finding it is quite simple. You click indices, indices, stocks, South Africa, and there they are all listed there, nice and simple. And that's just an example of what you would be seeing. In terms of it, I'm going to come back to it in a bit more detail. But that SA40 is a futures contract, so it's expiring. The cash is not because you're buying sell price. You will note the distinction between the two because that is a futures price. Futures prices, including interest and, 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 and uh, dividends uh, calculations, whereas that is not. So that is what we would call a spot. Your change, your last moment was updated, the high and low for the current period going through. You click on the little graph thing, it'll show you the chart. You click on the little arrow, it'll give you a whole bunch of options to trade it, to do a tear-off ticket and the like. We'll delve into those in a little more detail. And then, of course, international indices. And here is where it gets crazy. See, here it's really quite simple. Our choice is do we want to do 4 rand a point, 10 rand a point, or 50 rand a point, or a combination thereof. You could do 74 rand a point, of course. One of those, two of those, and two of those. Whatever the case may be. But you're trading SA40. Nice and simple. Then we go overseas. And now there are more indices and you can shake a sticker. So I, I, I knocked over my microphone. Hello, microphone. Still loves me. I cut it off because I was running out of real estate space um, on the browser, not on the screen. We've actually got more space. Yeah, you can trade absolutely anything here. I mean, you know, Brazil, I mean, Mexico, the whole, it's all there. The point is why? You know, wh why trade Brazil? Ah, dollars. Or sterling, whatever your default currency for the account is. And I would recommend dollars to it. Offshore money. offshore money. This is money that is physically offshore. It has left the country. It's part of your 11 million per year allowance. First million, no questions from SARS. Second 10 million, or the 10 million, if your tax affairs are in order, SARS will authorize you to take it for the 10 million. And that's per person per year. So a, a, tax, a taxpayer with their affairs in order can take 11 million rand per year offshore. Complete legit. It's, this is money that sits in a bank that is not a you know, so your any profit you make, you're taxed in South Africa. You make money in New York and in New York, you are taxed in South Africa. 
but the money physically sits overseas. The thing is, I mean, I Italy. So Italy sounds like fun. I mean, what some wine and stuff and <laughs> Italians and, and politicians that make ours look completely sensible. Um, <laughs> but why? You know, the, the question is just because it's there. Why go and trade it? And to me, and I'm looking at taking my lazy system and 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 and, and offshoring it in a sense that I will trade international indices as well. Um, and the ones I trade is quite simple. So U.S. 500 is the S&P or Wall Street, which is Dow Jones. I way prefer S&P. Um, it's just a cleaner index. It's a much better index. So though they keep fairly track in terms of uh, you know total returns and the like. To me, I just prefer the, the, the 500. FTSE 100, London, we know that perfectly well. Japan, which is Nikkei 225, uh, and then Eurostox 50, which is the 50 biggest companies listed in uh, Europe. Uh, uh, sorry, European Union. So European Union excludes the UK, uh, and but does include uh, biggest two players there, obviously, France and Germany. What I do by that is we've got, and if you want to bring some thrill into it, you could go for the, uh, there's a Russell 2000, which is the smaller mid-cap index in the US. Their market is so big, their small cap index, 2,000 stocks. Um, stock market, 500 in its entirety, from big to small. Um, you know, if, if, if crazy things are happening, if, if the world is ending, these are all crashing. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of what we would call correlation between them, and I trade in South Africa. I like to trade the sub indices, Indy, Resi, and Fini, because your Resi is doing one thing while your Indy is doing another, and your Fini is doing a third type of scenario. You know, if 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 there is a if a crash happens tonight in Japan, well, tomorrow morning it's going to happen in uh, Europe, it's going to happen in the UK, and it's going to happen in the US to varying degrees, but it's going to ripple through. But they broadly, you know, the, the, the Stocks 50 had a different impact on, on, on Thursday when Mario Draghi, head of the European Central Bank, uh, threw his kitchen sink at the problem. Uh, and Wall Street were like, yeah, I'm not really concerned about that. Um, so you do get a, a degree of, of, of a low degree of correlation. Typically what I would say is, is pick two and SA40, trade three. If you think that's one too many, pick one here, take SA40. And I would pick time zone dependent. They trade 24, but you really don't want to be. So when's the real trade happening in Japan? When we're sleeping. There is no upside to that. Yes, it's, there's, 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 there after I was trading is happening during our day. But the time zones for us is Eurostox 50 or FTSE 100. Quick point, the highest correlation we have, our index to another market, is in the 15 minute chart and is with the FTSE 100. Because so many of our big stocks are dual listed. So, I mean, who is it? It's BHP Billiton, it is uh, 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 SAB Miller, it's ABN Bev now, it's British American Tobacco, it is Old Mutual, and so the list goes on. So often you'll see if London starts to run, we'll run a minute or two later. Or if London starts to fall, we fall a minute or two later. You can trade that, but I wouldn't recommend it. <coughs> You spend your day watching London and South Africa and at the end of it your eyes are sore and you've made no money. So those are the two. What are the issues, costs, implications and the like? So the, the, there's a spread obviously which is the difference between buy and sell, exactly the same as per normal and they costs sitting there. The cash do not expire but that one there obviously has an expiry date which is your quarterly expiries. I trade the cash so that's of no issue to me. As I said costs in the spread, margin requirement, 0.75. So if you've taken a contract and you get the points per rand per points and you work out the value, you pay 0.75, which means your gearing is 133 times. Welcome, welcome to death by by extreme pain. So and what that means, and that you know that's only applicable if you take every cent you have in your in your IG account and throw it in and max out 100%. You might make money for the first eight seconds, but you will bust out. As I said, try it in a demo account. Some of you are looking at me skeptical. See how far in the red you can take your demo account. That margin is insane. But again, we manage it. Video number, uh, what number was it? Now I've lost my mind. Video number two, margin, leverage, and exposure from uh, August of last year. So here's an example. Index, 46,424. You go long, two micro contracts, four and a point is what you're going to make 
or lose. Margin requirement, 1,300 and change, call it 1,400, round it off. That margin requirement will change in real time as you're looking at it. Because, of course, as it goes up, the margin goes up, and as it goes down, the margin goes down. Market moves up 300 points. You exit the position at 46.724. You've made 300 points. You were doing 4 Rand per point. You've made 1,200 Rand profit. Relatively easy. A 300 point move is not a chunk at this point. Uh, 300 points is about 0.6 of a percent. Those are sort of the intraday moves you're going to get in any one given day. If it goes against you and you lose 400 points, so you exit at 46024, you were trading 4 Rand a point, you've lost 1,600 Rand. That is as easy as that. And in fact, the losing is often bigger because you're stressing it a bit and your response times are a little bit slower. Because why? You have something called fear, you're losing money, you're stressed, you pause, you just lost more. Ah, trading for you. Of course, you could have gone short instead, in which case you would have sold the contract. And when it fell to 46024, if you had sold at that level, you would have made 400 points. That screen makes sense. So that's indices. Let's look at FX. As I said, the majors only. Those are your majors. Uh, cable, which is pound sterling. That's uh, pound sterling. Sterling dollar, uh, euro dollar, uh, dollar yen, and uh, uh, pound euro. No one trades uh, uh, yen sterling. It's, it's just not there. But those are your four majors. If you want to trade a currency, trade euro USD. What is the biggest issue with currency? This is where money can be made by pocket. By, by truckload, just vast amount of money, all lost. <laughs> no, but think about it. So when you are Goldman Sachs and you put together a top whiz trading team, what do you send them off to trade? FX. The FX market is the most liquid market in the world. The volumes going through on FX are quanti quantities of what happens in New York every day. This is the most liquid market. And liquidity is a huge component of trading. The more liquidity, the more efficient the trading. So when Goldman Sachs gets up the five best traders in the world and gives them a billion dollars to trade with, what do they tell them? Go trade Euro USD. So you're trading against the biggest and the best with big pockets. Now they don't. They also go and trade CD, CDOs, and they'll go and trade futures and everything else. But trust me, the best traders are sitting here. So we've got to be sharp. So to my mind, we hone our skills in the index space, because although this is lower volatility, we hone our skills in index. We learn to deal with the emotions, the fear, the greed, the risk. And we've got that down pat. We can move into here. And you'll note, I haven't suggested stocks at all. Haven't suggested stocks at all. Just too volatile. Now, the point is, you can get guaranteed stops at IG. They cost you a bit. To my mind, you pay it every time. You always pay for the guaranteed stop. Simple reason. You all have insurance. Anyone's house burned down yesterday? No. Anyone cancel their insurance today because their house didn't burn down? No. Because we don't know what will happen tomorrow. So we take the guaranteed stops. The problem is you can just have a string of losers. So you're, only, you're limiting your downside, but you're just getting hit and hit and hit and hit. And it's A, soul destroying, and B, portfolio <laughs> destroying. So neither is particularly good. Important point, first currency is base, second currency is quote. So when you do a contract, and the contract is 10,000 currency units, you're going to buy the euro USD, and the price is currently uh, 1.11. That would cost 111,000 US dollars for the contract. You don't pay that. The margin requirement is 0.5%. So you would pay a little over $500 for it. But your exposure is $111,000. I'm glad people were soon to be spooked. Today, that is six, that's 1.6 million rand. In fact, 1.76, 1.78 million rand. That buys you a fancy car. Um, same picture here, same details. You've got all the same bits and pieces, your buyers and sells. You see something slightly different on the deal screen. You'll notice the two numbers that they highlight. is the third and fourth decimal place, because that is where you trade. You're trading on the fourth. When I talk about a pip, that six to seven is one pip. 
Here's what you're doing. Value is 10 currency per pip. So you're trading that contract is 100,000. And that example there, it would cost you 111,000 US dollars, will not cost you, that's the underlying value. Uh, and a mini is 10,000. The second currency, which is your, your literally called the quote currency, is what your purpose. So in this case, $10. So it's usually 10, unless you go to yen, because the yen has got so many zeros, the numbers go out. But usually it's going to be 10. So $10, if you were trading sterling, it would be 10 sterling, whatever the case be. Your margin is 0.5%. So on that $111,000, your margin is approximately $560. Almost nothing. But things go horribly wrong. You are geared 200 times. A half a percent move either doubles your money or takes it all away. Now, half a percent is big in the currency world. But if we lack discipline, if we get caught with a draggy and we're on the wrong side and we don't have ourselves a, a guaranteed stop in place, when Draghi spoke, currency moved almost a percent, which is giant, it's massive. But if in the wrong side of it, it absolutely hurts. Point is, is that you, 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 you massively come down. Again, back to video two. You don't take your whole portfolio. You've got a hundred thousand dollars in your account. Hundred thousand US dollars in your IG offshore account. You go and trade, yeah, one contract. Thank you. You pay six hundred dollars margin. Maybe if you really, really want to be aggressive, two contracts, twelve hundred dollars margin. So if you lose 100% on that trade, you've lost $1,200, nasty. But you've got another $98,800 left to keep you going. You go and say, well, I know, let's take a position. Let's, put, let's use 25,000 on margin. Your 100,000 could be 50 before you have time to drink a cold coffee. And as I said, we're trading down at that fourth decimal. So you'll see the FX, guys. It gives you the whole number, 1.1106. Ignore that last six. Um, but you're trading. You would buy at seven. And if you sold at eight, you would have made a pip. And you would have made yourself $10. Example, you go long. You're a USD at 111. Contract in a pip margin, 530. It goes up by a cent. That's a big move. It's gone from 111 to 112. You've made 100 pips. You've made $1,000. It goes against you. By half a cent, you've lost 500. Of course, again, at that point, I said go long. You can go short. You could have sold the contract. Questions on FX, questions on indices. I'm going to touch on one or two things, and I'm going to tr touch on some systems and some setups for IG. <coughs> Happy. Cool, cool. Confused. Scared? Bit of fear, nothing wrong with the dose of fear. <laughs> so this is actually a slide I kept in from last month's presentation. The only truth in the market. Remember the only truth in the market? Price. Everything else is noise. Draghi's noise. We don't and if we had known what Draghi was going to do, could we have preempted the move? Maybe, perhaps, uh, who knows? It's all just noise. What matters is price. We just respond to price. And if you remember last month, I, showed, I talked about uh, trading a system for trading the news. And last Thursday, Draghi was perfect. And I'll show it to you in a couple of slides times. It's not about the TVs. It's not about the fundamentals. It's not about the, the, the reserve, you know, central banks printing money and creating hyperinflation and pushing gold to the moon. No, 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 no. When gold goes to the moon, you will notice. Why? Because you're running out of space in your chart. And then you hop on the bus. You don't concoct a complicated story about why it's going to happen. You wait for it to be happening. And when it is happening, you jump on the bus. So Simon's lazy trading system. It's called Simon because I'm Simon. It's called lazy because I'm lazy. And it's a trading system. So it is Simon's lazy trading system. Uh, initially, it was based on a chap called Daryl Guppy's trading system out of Australia. But that used nine moving averages. That was not lazy. Um, so I, I resolved it down. I've been trading this. So I designed the system in 2004, latter part. I've been trading it since January of 2005. I have tweaked it over the years. At one point, I was trading warrants. Um, I now trade in the one part. I trade in the, the, uh, the, 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 the futures index. Um, for, and then the other part, I trade ETFs on a weekly chart. So first off, works with indices, works with FX. Does not work with shares. Too volatile. This is a trend-based system. 
The volatility of shares doesn't work. Now, maybe it just needs tweaking. Maybe if you just tweaked it, it would work with shares. But it doesn't. It's not designed to work with shares. And it's designed to catch trend. What does that mean as a trend-based trader? It means a lot of getting in, kicked out. Get in, kick out. And so it goes on. One day, get on, and it goes to the moon, and you're on board. And that's what trend-based trading is about. Lots of little losses. Lots of little losses. So it was, it was last year, um, up, to, uh, up to 10 December last year, I, my system was negative for the year. I'd done seven trades, every one a loser. Um, and then I happened to be short going into the end of the year, and it just threw money at me. Made back all the losses plus a whole lot more. But it takes a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, I can't think of the word, chutzpah, I suppose to enter trade 10 when the previous nine were losers. <laughs> but that's trend-based trading. And my record stands at a proud 13 losing trades in a row. 13 in a row. That's fine. Eventually, then before, so the, 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 the win-loss ratio sits at about 48, 52, 48 winners, 52 losers. Most of the winners are small, occasionally the big ones. So it's a, call it 50-50. But anything that's 50-50, you start tossing a head, uh, tossing a coin, you should get, you know, head, tail, head, tail, head, tail, but you won't. You will at times get strings of heads or strings of tails. Same happens here. The beauty is when you get the string of winners. My record is nine winners in a row. That's awesome. You can use any time frame. My recommendation is hourly, four hourly, daily, or weekly. For FX, my preferred time frame is always going to be four hours. Just the, uh, And, you know, you, you can drop down. IG will give you a one-minute chart. I don't believe we can trade one-minute charts effectively. Uh, I don't think we're quick enough. Understand that as we compress a time frame, so as we go from weekly to daily to four hourly to one hourly, as we compress that time frame, we increase the number of trades that we have. We increase the number of spreads we need to cross and fees we need to pay to transact. Our trade sizes, our profits are smaller. Our losses, in theory, are smaller as well. And we've got to be quicker. If you're trading a weekly chart and you're half an hour late to entry the trade, yeah, no one noticed. If you're trading a, a 60 minute chart and you're half an hour late to enter the trade, you've missed it. If you're trading a one minute chart and you're 10 seconds late to enter the trade, it's gone without you. So, I mean, when I have day traded, I've dropped to a 15 minute trading system. I couldn't make money below 15. I know guys who can, I couldn't. Um, but even 15 was killing me. And I went for hourly and four hourly. FX, obviously, continuous market, right? Kicks off Monday morning, 5 a.m. Sydney, closes Friday afternoon, 5 p.m. New York. But what you do find is that the Asia slot is usually quite quiet, particularly some of it's when we're in bed. So from 10 o'clock at night, 9 o'clock at night through to about 7 or 8 in the morning, when it's really Asia running, there's not a lot happening in the FX market. Because, again, you can get stopped when you sleep. Yep, so you want it to stay there. So what is the system? The system's quite simple. First, determine the primary trend, up or down. Only trade in that direction. And there's nothing to say that you don't do shorts, but well, that's another debate in its entirety. So how do you determine the primary trend? The 30 and the 60 exponential moving average. <coughs> you can use weighted, you can use simple, I use exponential. Exponential slightly weights the most recent data. You all remember what you had for lunch today. Lunch on Monday? Probably. Last Monday? Maybe. Monday in January? No. Market's exactly the same. It's got memory. So what the market does is says yesterday's data is more important than the day before and the day before on an exponential. That's why I use exponential moving averages. The difference is tiny. Between a weighted, a simple, and exponential, the difference is tiny, but I like the logic of this. So I use a 30 and a 60 exponential moving average. If the 30 is above the 60, my trend is up. I am only doing long trades. If I get a sell signal, I will ignore it because I'm trading counter trend. Some folks, if they get a sell signal when trend is up, will do half size. I didn't even bother with half size. If the 30 is below the 60, trend is down. I only do shorts or I go to cash. When I'm trading the ETFs in my weekly system using lazy, when we go to the short side, we don't go short. We just sit in cash. 
So my system's been short now since, so not short, been in cash since about October. What happens is the market falls, you earn interest. And when the market rallies again, you'll jump back on the bus and start to run with it. So 30 and 60 tells you direction. You then move and you look at price and the 15 EMA. Trigger is price above. I got pictures for this in a moment. So if you don't like words, for people who like pictures like me, I got pictures on the next slide. Trigger is price above the 15. So it goes from below to above, boom, trigger. I use a two-step entry process. So I don't get the trigger and buy. I get the trigger and I say, if the next candle, if the next period is green, then I'll buy. What am I doing? Wind at my back. I'm just stacking up a little. The last thing I want to do is I get a buy signal and I buy, and the next period I'm in the red. It's like, hang on, I said the thing's going up, and the first chance it gets, it goes down. No, that's not good. So I give it that extra step. That also keeps me out of trades. Remember I've spoken before, I want to trade less rather than more. Trades are a cost to me, trades are a risk. Cost in transaction, cost in spread, <coughs> cost in slippage. So 15 goes up, and then the next bar is green, boom, we confirm, we enter the trade. Exit is either a 15 or a 30 EMA. If I'm in the shorter time frames, I'll use the 15. If I'm in the weekly time frame, I'll use the 30 exponential. And the point with that is in a weekly chart, when I get in and that thing goes, I just want to stay. So I took along on the Indy 25 in October 2011 and got kicked out last year. You want to, you know, and, and you want to be. The Indy 25 went up 300, well, I don't know, it, it went galactic in that period. It went from 20 odd thousand to 70 odd thousand. And the bus is running, you want to stay on it as best as possible. So I give it lots of bigger room. Of course, that's ungeared. If you're geared, look to the 15. I'm not a big fan of taking profit at targets because I think we lack ambition, but particularly in shorter time frames, I would look to take profit at targets. How would you do that? Ideally, you want to be able to exit in three components. So you want to be able to sell three times on the way out. First profit is when you, so if your stop loss is 50 points away, 50 points profit, sorry, 50 points in profit, sell a third. Another 50 points in profit, another third. And then let the last third run as that stop loss comes up behind you. Did that make sense? Cool. Dude, if you, if you folks are going to nod so much, we're going to finish early. <laughs> Not criticizing, complimenting. So there's my pictures. Don't you love my lines? So I always do my 60 is blue and my 30 is red. I don't know why, but I do. So there's a 60 EMA, there's a 30 EMA. That's all we have there right now. 60 and 30, nothing else. What do we see? 30 above 60, trend is up. We ignore the short signals. We're only looking for a long trade. Boom, there's my 15 EMA. Point is, those first two, initially I look relative to each other. The 15, I look relative to price. So there's my 15 EMA and it's going along, it's also got rising. And then price goes from below to above. Boom, trigger. Next period, green, enter. Let's look at some real world examples. So these are screenshots from IG. They were taken yesterday afternoon at about 4 o'clock, half past 4, using SA40, using the 4 hour chart, using this process. I'll show you in a moment how to set this up with an IG. That's why the demo account story went out. So trust me on the moving averages, but what you, the beauty here is you just hover your mouse over the particular candle and it shows you all the data. So what have we got? Well, we've got the 30 is above the 60 and price has just gone through the 15. We agree with all of that. Boom, 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 boom. That's that candle there or that candle there. Next candle closed green. So I enter. I enter at the end of the candle. In this case, my entry then would have been at 45906 would have been my entry. Um, and at yesterday afternoon, we had moved up to 247. This entry would have been on Friday afternoon. Um, and by yesterday afternoon, we were up, we were 200 and about 350 odd points in the profit. Looking at another example, USD, the, the cable, USD, uh, cables, USD sterling. I don't know why they call it cable. I do know why they call it cable. Because they used to cable the orders to each other via an undersea cable. Back with the days before telephones, before Snapchat. See, I'm hip, I know about Snapchat. Looking at a weekly chart here. Closed below. 
There's my close below, came down, there is my confirmation candle, which would have got me short at 149, uh, and that would have been on 21 December. Yep, we're going back pre-Christmas, and at 4 o'clock <laughs> yesterday, the market was at 143, so you'd made yourself 6 cents of profit. 6 cents doesn't seem like a heck of a lot, but that's 6,000 pounds. So here's another example. This is from my chart because this is ND25 and this I'm not trading anything yet. I'm trading the ETF. But here's my story. So there's my, my, my 15 and 30. I got my colors the wrong way around. Hmm. 15 and 30 and the, the green one is my 15. Sorry, 30, 60. Green one is my 15 trigger. So it goes through. Boom. But didn't go green the next week. So I didn't enter. But the trade, is, the trigger is still live. So if we look at this down here, so that there was Friday before last. Boom, through the 15. Last Friday, we did not close higher. So I did not enter the trade. But the trade is still live. Or the trigger is still live. Why? Because I'm still above the 15. Only when we fall below the 15, as happened at the first arrow and the second arrow, then the trade becomes null and void, or the trigger becomes null and void, and we wait for the next entry. And you can see what happened. By that process of saying, I want a two-step entry, I would have three times in the last couple of months entered the ND25, and every time I would have lost money. Produces a number of trades, reduces number of losing trades, markedly. So it means I've just been sitting and watching instead of sitting and losing money. Makes me much happier. So I still have an active trigger on the ND25. If this Friday we close above 704 and change, 70,400 and change, which was that green close in the candle there, at close of this Friday I will enter the ETF. If we don't, I don't, and as long as we're above the green, 15 EMA, I stay in business. Yes, sir. Simon Buber, the tails on the candle have any significance? I, the tails do not. So in truth, I could use a line chart here. I could, act, I could absolutely use a line chart. I, I just like candles, although this candle is giving me far too much information. All I need is the close. I also like candles, but I'm trying to work out if those tails mean no. anything. No, so in this case, the, the tails, the wicks, all I want is the close. So the closes are, if it's green, the close is the top one. If it's red, the close is the bottom. So there's a close, there's a close, there's a close, there's a close. Close, 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 close. But what you see here is a market that is frankly lacking direction. A week yeah. up, three weeks down. Two up, two, three down. Two up, one down. That's not a trending market. What's a trending market? Go look at the small cap index. Green, 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 green. Eight weeks in a row. Thanks to gold stocks. That, folks, is the system. Makes sense to you. Questions? There's a video on the Just One Lap website. If you go... <laughs> Um, and I'm going to be updating it, but there is one there right now. Just type lazy into the search, you'll find it. It gives you the details, it goes through it. If you've got questions, you can mail me, you can tweet me, whatever the case may be. But it is just that simple. And, and, and the nuances to it are primary direction first, 30 and 60. Only trade in that direction. Then price and 15, EMA. And then when it closes through, trigger. Next candle green, enter. It is a trend-based. It will give you. I mean, the fact that I've now shown you two trades there and there that, that, that showed a profit is, is frankly scandalous. I should have showed you some losing trades. Trust me, they're there. You'll see enough of those in time. Um, it, about a 48% win ratio. And that number skewed because it, what are you trading? Different markets are going to give different, different time frames. So the 48.52 is on a daily or a weekly chart trading local indices. I know a guy who trades on an FX, he's doing fairly well with it, he trades it on, on a, uh, a weekly chart, and in fact he put me onto the sterling trade, he told me to go hunt it out. Don't trade it with shares. Commodities, I honestly don't know, I've looked, at it. My, when, I, when I've tested it for commodities, it's never seemed to have worked. Works for currencies, works for indices. Two things. Some of you are thinking 15, 30, 60, yeah, but what about 12, 24, and 48? Sure. Why not? Point I'm making is that that's what I use. Is are those the perfect three numbers in the world? 
I mean, maybe I was sitting in Butchers Hill, KZN, and I discovered the perfect three numbers in the world. Doubt it. They work. If you think they're better numbers, if you want to go and tweak it and change it and make it different, um, if you go and do testing and discover that 25, 50, 100 is better, again, if you increase the numbers, trades will, frequency will decrease, duration will increase. In theory, profits will increase. If you reduce the numbers, trade frequency decreases, trade size decreases, trade frequency increases. That's the rule of time. Compress it, you get more, expand it, you get less in the trading space. That's the rule of time. And then you're thinking, if this thing's any good, why does he publish it? It's a good question. And there are two reasons why I publish it. One, very few people go and take If everyone that I've shown this system to traded this system, we'd be in trouble. It would be a scramble for the entry and a scramble for the exit and it would be messy as hell. Most people don't. Because most people, frankly, lack the discipline. Because this is a system that mostly you sit in your hands and do nothing. And even in a one-hour chart, mostly, so there's a, okay, it's a four-hour chart. But there's a trade that ran, so you did nothing. You entered a trade on Friday afternoon, and you, you probably got out today. I, I haven't checked, you probably got, in fact, you almost certainly got stopped out today. But if you're trading for the thrill of it, this is the most boring thing in the world. This is not called Simon Super Duper Maximum Exciting Fun Trading System. <laughs> because it is not Simon Super Duper Maximum Fun Exciting Trading System. It's a lazy trading system. Remember I've spoken about this before. I do not want to be a slave to my screen. My desire is not to be a day trader and spend 10 hours a day in front of my screen trading. In which case I may as well get a haircut and go get a job. <laughs> My desire is to drink wine and do things I enjoy, presentations, and, and, and be able to go to Cape Town to do a presentation with Anthony Clark and have my sister and her kids come up next week and go see Nicki Minaj in Cape Town on Monday. And <laughs> you can't want to come to Nicki Minaj. <laughs> <laughs> like it 100%. So just to repeat the question so the webcast folks can hear it, we leave a lot of money on the table. How do we resist, resist the temptation? So certainly... The one way to, to, I'll answer your question in a moment, the one way to solve the problem and leave less money on the table is take a target. Take profit at target. In other words, take profit as you're running into profit. I touched on that slightly. How do I sit comfortable with leaving money on the table? Two things. In the book, uh, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, he talks about the bit in the middle. Well, he doesn't. He talks about the first eighth and the last eighth of a, of a run. You know, stock falls, turns, and we try and call the bottom. And he says, forget calling the bottom. Wait for it to be running. And then wait for it to turn and come back down. And basically, if, if, a, if a move, because he's American, so they use eights, not tenths, haven't discovered their thumbs. <laughs> he's saying, I'll take six of those eights, and I'll leave those other two on the table. Although I'm leaving more than that in many cases. But then, so I look at this, and I think, look, I'm leaving, I'm not leaving two eights on the table, I'm leaving three or four eights on the table, so I try and maximize my profit and I try and retweak it and I try and change it and make it different and it doesn't, so it makes me money here but then I make money, less money there, etc, etc. The single way to do it is to be either more aggressive with your stop or to take money, to take money as you're going into profit. So sell a third, sell a third, sell a third. And there is folks out there who will tell you that the math says Selling into strength is the better option in terms of profitability. For me, I want to stay in that trend as long as possible. So let's go back to that Indy 25 trade I did October 2011, 24,000 points. I go long. What am I, 30,000 points? I'm out. But the index runs to 70 before it stops me. Now, that's not a completely true story because over the years it gave me more rebuys and more rebuy opportunities. But there would have been, you know, I would have had more transaction costs, more spreads to cross, and so the list goes on. So there is a lot of, I mean, short answer, a lot of money being left on the table. I'm comfortable with it. Oh, I can, no, it'll work in a down as well. So the down works. The only difference is, is that this is upside down. I mean, to, to know when to take off. Ah, so when it turns on you. Um, so in a sense, that's what we do, because we use moving averages for your exits. So if you wait for the 30 and 60 to cross to exit, that's going to be painful because that's going to happen way down there. But if you're using the 15 EMA, which is also your entry point, so you use 15 entry and exit. Also on my weekly, 
I use 30, which makes even more money on the table. Whereas on my daily and shorter time frames, I use the 15. I'm essentially using the 15. So it's an important point that I use that 15 for entry and exit. And here's why. So that I get a trade, it's a fake one, not a fake one, but I don't make a profit and I get stopped. And I'm, but it means immediately it runs again, I'm back on the bus. It means every time that bus leaves the station, I'm on the bus. Okay, it might go 100 yards, break down, and I've got to go back to the station. But it means I'm on every bus that leaves. So that when the big giant winner comes, I'm on that bus, and I don't miss out. Because the problem with being a trend trader is those <laughs> big winners are infrequent, but incredibly important. And if you don't catch them, and you, you're going to miss a few, but if you, don't, if you miss too many, you just don't make, you, you're breaking even. You're earning bank deposit rate. So. Sorry? Yeah, so the stop loss trails, although for me it's a blunt one and that it's a 15 EMA. Um, I'm going to, when we talk risk in a month or two, a, a truckload of it. So what I'm doing is I'm manually updating it. No, no because the system, I can't say to the system, stop me on a close below the 15 EMA. If I could, I would, but I can't. So what I have to do is say, right, what's my 15 EMA? It is 46,200. Put it in hard. Next period. But what I mean by put it in hard is put a guaranteed stop in at that level. Right. Next period. Come back. 46,350. Delete the old one. Stick new one in. Guaranteed. New <coughs> level. And your broker's... Uh, you're not for your broker, but for you, yes. Yeah. No, 100%. So if you use 15 and 30 as a crossover for, for an exit, it works as well. And, and, and this is the whole point. So this is very much designed for me, the way it's presented here, to be as lazy as possible and to ideally trade in a weekly chart. There are um, it's, as many people as there are in the room and who will watch this video ways of tweaking it. This works. There's nothing to say you can't take it. But you can do a lot with it to to, 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 to careful of, of overly trying to fit it. You know, to go look at the last three trades. So, for example, this one here to say, well, you know, if I'd used something, I would, I mean, be careful of retrofitting into a couple of previous trades. You want something that works in the good times and the bad. You want something that works in stonking bull markets and crashing bear markets and everything in between. So. Um, Yes, I use the 2% rule in terms of my position size. In fact, I use a 1.2% rule, just in case of slippage, but short answer, yes. And for the folks who are looking confused, there's a video on just one lap, go search 2%, um, or it's in our, in our risk uh, uh, seminar, which we do coming up in two months, which we'll do the 2% rule. Yeah, and that defines my position size. So how many contracts I take, what my risk per point or per pip is. Yes. What about the risk and the reward ratio? I do not take risk and reward ratio because, to my mind, um, particularly my system doesn't give me targets. So this, you know, if you're using, particularly with chart patterns, you get targets. You can say head and shoulders will take you to here. You can get the targets. I don't get them here at all. So I, I can't. I haven't got a. I've got a risk. I haven't got a reward. What I've got though is 11 years of data that tells me the risk reward pans out. So my big win is here, your reward is about 15 times your risk. The small win is your reward is about two times your risk. And then, of course, your losers are one times your risk. So how do we set up the chart? You log into your IG demo. You will find the SA market. You click on that little button on the top circled up there, which represents chart. Boom, a chart pops up. I haven't shown you the chart. This is just the top part of it. You click on the timestamp there, and you can then select whatever time frame that you want. So you can go from monthly down to ticks. Pick any time frame you want. And then you click on the technical, which then gives you a whole bunch of vo massive amount of indicators and the like. I click on EMA. Fortunately, the system allows you to have three EMAs. You can have less if you want. Um, it defaults to 20, 50, uh, 100 and you just replace it with 15, 30, 60. And then you're in biz. Now you've got the chart. It is as simple as that. Quick 
news, so this one I actually chatted about in last month's session when we were looking at trading the news flow, should we, can we, how do we manage it and the like. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of time, the slide is there, but the, just to show it working, again, here yeah, we're sitting in a USD dollar, um, and this was Thursday last week when Mario Draghi was speaking. Uh, and remember, the first break, which is the first candle, does nothing, but you draw your line in the sand. Second candle went down. This is a one-minute chart. Beautiful. Third candle, fourth candle break. There was your entry at that green line on the fourth candle. The trick is, where did you exit? Did you exit somewhere here? Or did you exit after the second massive run? To my mind, at that point, as soon as we got that massive run, here I would have taken some profits. I would have locked some profits, and I would have moved my stop loss halfway up that candle. So that one there almost got me. But didn't and then I caught the second run and I would have got stopped somewhere at there I'm out of the process and this is not listening to what Mario Draghi said not interested in what he has to say this is just watching the action in the price chart run pull back run and in essence we can see it run pull back and then that's a, 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 a and then another run and then another blur down and then in fact there's another one that comes later as well and that, I mean, if you caught the small move there, you made about 15 pips, which is 150 euros. If you caught the big move, you made about 140 pips, which is about 1,400 euros. Trick with this system is you've got to be knowing that Mario is talking. Easy enough. There's a calendar in IG. You can go find that. But then you've got to sit there. And, okay, so Mario Drach, he's great. He's really great for trading, man. He moves markets, man. We call him Super Mario because he just he moves currency almost every time. But like the U.S. data, non-farm and stuff, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And you never know when it will or won't. So you sit, you wait, nothing. Ah, come back the next day. Yeah, when it does happen. When it happens. When, yeah, it's so fast. So this is one minute chart. So this entire picture is half an hour. And in fact, that entire trade window there is three minutes. From when he started speaking to when you drew a line in the sand to when you entered a trade is three minutes. Key point, shut everything else down. Do not think that you can do Twitter and email and everything else. If you have two screens, turn one screen off. Do a tear off from the deal ticket and get it. We, we cannot multitask. And if you've got to do all of that in three minutes, and you, if, you, if you are trying to do anything else, you will fail. Probably you'll do that poorly, and you'll do this poorly. Because in this new system, you want short time frame. You want a minute. Yeah. You could have one, two, three, four, five. You, so the f one, two, three, four. So you actually could have used the five minutes in this case, and you would have entered into that candle there. But this works best in a one minute. It can work in a five, but it works best in a one. And the five is more relaxed because then you had, you know, you were entering, that, that, it was then an 11 minute process rather than a three minute process. Extra whole eight minutes. Don't think that that means you can watch Twitter for seven of them. Because what happens is you get sucked in. Trust me, being there. You, you, I'll watch Twitter for seven minutes and nine minutes later you look back and Super Mario has left the building. Quickly in closing, have a plan. Trade the plan. It's less about the quality of the plan. It's more about having it. It's more about being disciplined. It's more about doing the plan properly. That is what matters. Without a shadow of a doubt. Two systems here, lazy and the news. There are other systems on just one lap, some from Alvain Berger, designed particularly for trading uh, indices, Warren, sorry, FX, Warren Peacock, for trading indices and CFDs. The reason people fail is not because the systems aren't good, but because we're impatient and we lack discipline. Demo account. If you're trading, that's fine. If you're new to it, and even if you're new to IG, demo account. Why? Because the last thing you want to be doing is stressing Mario, or the last thing you want to be doing is quickly doing the buys, and you don't know the system. You don't know which button means what. You think it's that, but what about that? The demo more than anything. The demo is not teaching you trading discipline because there's no real money, there's no skin in the game. What is the demo teaching you? It's teaching you the platform. That's what you need to know. You need to know that platform backwards. So that I can say to you that little button next to the funny one and you know exactly what I'm talking about. 
that's what the demo does. Because otherwise, the first time you're entering a trade, you've got stresses about getting it wrong on the system. You've got stresses about clicking the wrong button. You've got stresses about not reading the system right. You've got stresses about losing money. That is not a happy place to be. The demo is there because you, 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 demo accounts teach you a bit about trading, but you really learn when there's money in the game. But what you do with the demo account is learn the system, learn how it works, where to click, learn where to find something, learn how to change the stop loss, learn what happens when your account busts out. So I say, just load up, go completely 100% long of something dangerous, bust the account out to see what happens. I mean, I don't know. I, I haven't done it. There's a red light flash. <laughs> Make your offshore account in USDs. The default is sterling. <coughs> this is a, a British-based company, a FTSE 250 company. Contact the call center. Ask them to, con to turn your base account into US dollars for your offshore account. Obviously, local is rats. So if you're going to trade the FTSE, although you could hack it and go trade and e go trade a FTSE replica in New York, yeah. trade the price. That is you're thinking you're the smartest person in the room. You might be the smartest person in the room. I'm not denying that part. I'm saying it doesn't matter. The stupidest person in the room can make money. It's about trade the price. Pr your pride, ego, park them at the door. Park them at the door. So now we're really getting into some nuts and bolts. I've been showing this slide every, every month when we come here. I've been running through this slide every month when we come here. This evening, getting nuts and bolts. Next month, we're on to psychology. Thereafter, we do risk management. Uh, and then there's uh, one left, which will be June, which wraps it. And then we're back again in July for a new series. Um, ladies and gents, I'm going to park it there because I've hit my time. Contact details for IG. Contact details for myself. Videos are all uh, online, just one lap.com slash bootcamp. There's the URL. I knew it was there somewhere. And lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gents, thank you very much for your time this evening. <laughs>